When we discussed the conservation of energy, we stated that the total quantity of energy in the universe in an isolated system always remains constant. So that basically implies that energy cannot be destroyed and it cannot be created. Energy is only transformed from one type to another type, from one system to another system. Now, in the same exact way that energy is conserved and energy can transfer, electric charge is also conserved and electric charge can also transfer from one system to another system. Now, before we state what the law of conservation of charge tells us, Let's actually define what electric charge is and where it comes from. And let's begin by examining a simplified version, a simplified model of the atom. So an atom is composed of three types of subatomic particles. We have protons and neutrons located in a dense section of mass called the nucleus. Now protons carry electric charge while neutrons do not carry electric charge. So we're not going to discuss neutrons in this lecture. However, electrons which are the subatomic particles that orbit our nucleus also have also carry an electric charge. Now, the quantity of electric charge that is carried by one proton is equal to the quantity of electric charge that is carried by one electron. However, from experimental results, we know that a proton will attract an electron. So that's exactly why we arbitrarily assign a negative to an electron and a positive sign to a proton. So our unlike charges attract and like charges repel. So protons and electrons will attract one another because one has a negative charge and the other one has a positive charge. While like charges will always repel one another. So two protons or two electrons which have equal and like charges will always repel one another. Now, we basically define electric charge as simply this characteristic or property of our subatomic particles known as protons and electrons. Now, even though the mass of an electron is much smaller than the mass of a proton, they have the same exact quantity of electric charge, but the signs are opposite. Now, in the same exact way that energy can transfer from one location to another location, electric charge can also transfer. And in the same exact way that our amount or quantity of energy in the universe remains constant, the quantity of electric charge in the universe also remains constant. And that's exactly what we mean by the law of conservation of electric charge. Whenever electric charge transfers out of a system, that same charge, that same quantity of charge must be gained by the surroundings. So that implies that the net amount of charge produced in any process must always be zero. Now let's move on to the process known as charging. So charging is essentially the process by which our electric charge is transferred from one system or an object to another system or an object. Now, in solid objects, protons are held very rigidly in place. So protons don't actually transfer. What actually transfers in solids are electrons. So in solids, when electric charge is transferred, that means electrons are transferred. So charging is the process by which a system gains or loses certain quantities of charge. So let's look at the following experiment. Let's suppose we take a plastic comb and we take a cloth. So here we have our plastic comb and here we have our cloth. Now this cloth happens to be made of cotton. So what happens if I rub the comb with the cloth? Well, electrons will be transferred 
out of the cloth and into our comb. So if our plastic comb and the cloth are initially neutral, after I rub my comb with the cloth, what happens is this gains a positive charge and this gains a negative charge. Now the net charge of these two objects will still be zero because initially the two objects had a neutral charge and that's because of the law of conservation of electric charge. The net amount of charge produced in any process must always be zero. So the comb after rubbing with the cloth will become negatively charged. So that means after rubbing my comb with the cloth, this will have a negative charge. And if I bring this object next to an object that is a positive charge, they will attract one another, as we'll see in just a moment. So I take my comb and I rub the comb with my cloth. So what is taking place now, our electrons are transferring, are moving out of the cloth and they're moving into the comb. So when I take these two objects, when I separate my two objects, what will happen is my cone will have a negative charge. So let's suppose I rub it for a few more seconds and then I take some other object that has a positive charge. So I take this away, I pick up objects that have a positive charge, so some of these pieces of paper will have a positive charge, some of them will have a negative charge. The ones that will have a positive charge will attract, so this ruler or this uh, comb should be able to pick up these pieces of paper and in fact that's exactly what happens. When I rub my cloth and the comb, what happened was this comb gained negative charge. So that's exactly how it's picking up some of these uh, pieces of paper because the papers have a positive charge. Now notice eventually this ruler will lose that electric charge. So because this object loses electric charge, that electric charge has to go somewhere. Where exactly does that electric charge go? Well, it goes into the molecules found in the air. So if we examine water molecules found in the air, we'll see that each oxygen atom inside the water molecule has a partial positive charge. And so electrons will transfer out of the cone and into water molecules found in the air. And eventually, this cone will lose its negative electric charge. So over time the cone becomes uncharged and that's because the partial, the partially positively charged H2O molecules in the air attract the electrons in the cone.